WandaVision is taking a lot of inspiration from Wanda Maximoff's comic story from the revelation of Agnes being Agatha Harkness to the kidnapping of her twins, Tommy and Billy. We have discovered in a previous video how Agnes was definitely the witch Agatha, and one of the reasons that led us to believe was her brooch, and sometimes necklace, she uses all the time. In the comics, that same brooch doesn't have any specific engravings or pictures in the center. It's simply a white shape. But in the Marvel series, that isn't the case. After searching through a numerous stills from the series, and by zooming in on the brooch, we were able to recognize some interesting shapes. It's important to highlight that at any circumstance, the brooch has a close-up moment. We even tried to search information on the brooch through Katherine Hahn's individual poster, but to our surprise, the content was fully erased, like we can see here. So they're definitely hiding something. At first, we thought that it would just be representing three female silhouettes without any huge importance. But Marvel doesn't work that way, and like everything we've seen in the series, all details matter. So we started digging deeper and deeper until we found a possible explanation for some of the questions that don't have any answers. Until now. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. The answer is art. Groups of three female figures are quite common in Western art, but they can represent very different ideas. In fact, the two most common groups, which are the Fates and the Three Graces, are both associated with life, but the Fates represent destiny and death, while the Graces represent life at its fullest. A dichotomy, eh? The Fates were considered to be the ones who decided the birth, life, and death for each person. They were called Mori by the Greeks, Pancreae by the Romans, Norns by the Scandinavians, and share very similar features across those three civilizations. The Norns exist within the Marvel comic universe and the MCU, as can be seen in Avengers Age of Ultron. Hopefully you can find out what we need before they consume me completely. Oh no, we count the dead, and they are legion. The first was the spinner who made the thread for every human life. The second was the one who measured the length of that thread, and the third was the one who cut the thread, deciding how the person would die. They usually have a serious, old, or sad appearance, and they hold the rod on which the thread is spun, the thread itself, and most of the time, but not always, the scissors to cut the thread. The Fates' appearance greatly contrasts with that with the Three Graces, who are usually young and playful. Their best known representation is Bonicelli's Primavera, or Spring, and that's exactly where our focus is on this video. In addition to the Three Graces, we believe other characters are represented in this painting. Let's start with the most obvious one. On the left-hand side of the painting, we can see the god Hermes holding his caduceus, the staff that identifies him. This god is known to be the messenger between the mundane and divine worlds, aided by his winged sandals. He's also famously regarded as being the divine trickster with a dubious character. Okay, but how does that relate with WandaVision? Well, Hermes is the Greek version of the Roman god Mercury. And what is another word for Mercury? Well, if you thought about Quicksilver, then you're correct. That's a good start, but there is more. If we now look to the other side of the painting, we see a male wing figure kidnapping another female figure. This first one is called Zephyrus, and is also a god, the Greek god of the West Wind. Although this one isn't exactly spot on, it still has a strong connection to the series, because the place where Wanda created her ideal reality is called Westview. Interesting, right? Zephyrus kidnaps and possesses the nymph Chloris, and later makes her his wife, turning her into the goddess of flowers Flora. Notice the possessed part? This could be the making of a parallel to the couple Agatha Harkness and Mephisto slash Ralph that is yet to be announced on the show. The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. Right next to Chloris is none other than Flora herself. Yes, the same character appears twice, revealing that the painting isn't a specific frozen moment in time, but rather a play with time itself. Just like what happens in WandaVision when Wanda rewinds time, suggesting that she controls time at her will, except when it comes to Agnes. 
There are still two characters in place in the painting, the stars of the show, Wanda and Vision. But fear not, the central figure in Bonicelli's spring is Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty, and procreation. Very fitting for Wanda. After all, she did create her own reality, mainly due to a heartbreak and did have children. Twins, in fact. Speaking of the twins, if Wanda and Quicksilver are siblings, shouldn't also Aphrodite and Hermes be too? Well, you got it, that's correct. While we were searching deeply for connections, we also found another possible link to the show. In episode seven at Agnes's house, she has a cicadia in the curtains and at first it seems a little odd. That's true that Agnes has a special attachment to animals like Senior Scratchy, or not so much in Sparky's case. And I killed Sparky too. What we could find was a connection, once again, with the painting. If you're a Marvel Comics fan, then you already know that Mephisto's first appearance is as a fly, but in the series, they probably changed it to a cicada in order to fit the plot better. So why is that? In Chinese tradition, cicadas symbolize rebirth and immortality. In the Homeric Hymn to Aphrodite, the goddess retells the legend of how Eos, the goddess of the dawn, requested Zeus to let her lover Tithanos live forever as an immortal. Zeus granted her request, but as she didn't ask for him to be ageless, Tithanos never died, eventually growing old and then becoming so tiny that he turned into the first cicada. Perhaps Agatha Harkness is trying to restore Mephisto's body and powers in order to obtain Wanda's chaotic magic by draining her and absorbing the twins like in the comics. After 17 years underground, the nymphs of the periodical cicada march like zombies towards the nearest tree. Also, fun fact, there is a species of cicada named mass devils, so it could be a coincidence. It's a pretty rad theory, don't you think? Go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, as we really would love your support. And if you would like, feel free to check in on our Wanda videos every single time that we put one out by slapping on that notification bell. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.